Welcome to your online strength coach daily podcast episode 13 SC qualifications That intro though Yeah <laughs> There are so many skits in hip hop videos, that are really annoying, especially in hip hop albums. It's, it's got to be one of the worst things. Um, welcome to episode thirteen of your daily strength coach podcast. Um, today is the ninth of the seventh, twenty fifteen, or at least it will be when you're listening to this. If you listen to it when I uh, release it on YouTube, and um, of course, as I mentioned, the R podcast is actually. The 8th or the 7th currently, and I'm just recording this straight after the last one. Um, just like the last one, I'm just I'm just hitting up the bodybuilding.com forums because they're massive and they've got loads of content that I can use as fodder for these things. Um, so this one's in the personal training uh, forum, which I, to be honest, I don't really go in. I've been in a couple of times before, years ago, but I'm just, just kind of hang around the misc and just, just, just enjoy the lols. Um so I thought for some uh, for some content it might be an interesting one to go into because uh, I've been answering loads of training related questions, which of course are going to be probably the vast majority of what this podcast is going to be about. But I thought it might be a little bit well for me maybe more than the two guys who listen to this. It would be um, our girl, the girl as well, two guys and the one girl. Um, I gotta stop saying that. It's such a fucking stupid thing to have a negative connotation to all my thousands and millions of fans around the world. Of the thousands and millions of uh, online strength coach podcast fans around the world listen to this right now. I'm up in that. I'm all up in that personal training, uh, misc, bodybuilding.com, shit stuff, forums. Uh, yeah, so I'm gonna post this up on <laughs> that thread. So um, yeah, I'm probably gonna sound like a retard, but whatever. So the question, the thread title is strength and conditioning qualifications. The dude Salty VTR from the UK, 27, natural bodybuilder. I don't. What's with natural bodybuilder? I don't get that. Anyway, um, are you allowed to provide online programs and training if you hold an SNC qualification? That's a SNC qualification, is it not? Instead of a personal training qualification, what SNC qualifications would you recommend? Okay, first and foremost, as someone quite rightfully pointed out in the thread, you require zip and jack shit qualifications to be an online personal trainer or coach or whatever you want to call yourself. Like, <coughs> like strength coach. Um, yeah, so if you want to get into the field, I would probably suggest that you start by maybe going into like a gym instructor job or something like that. Rather than just going and hitting up the the online coaching business, you'll be able to make money. If you, like the money side of things, more down to marketing and um, it's a bit I'm sure. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's more about the marketing. It's not so much of the knowledge or the the uh, programming ability or whatever like your coaching ability. It's more about how you put yourself across. Um, if you use email list well. Uh, if you have a good social media presence, although I don't think that's quite as important, um, how well you leverage your, um, if you use AdWords, how well you leverage that. You know, these are the sort of things that actually make a difference. So you get eyes on, and then if you have a good sales page, um, you, 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 you should convert. You should convert reasonably easily. Um, but then after that's what you're going to have to be worried about. It is is a reasonably crowded market, so you either need to have outstanding marketing or outstanding service. So to achieve outstanding service, I would suggest that you probably need to coach people for a time. Um, Maybe get like a gym instructor qualification and uh, just get yourself on the floor and just just help people out for a year or two years. I appreciate you probably train quite a lot. You probably know a fair bit about training. But knowing about training yourself and training other people are two completely different things and two completely different facets. Um, you're just going to be totally 
biased towards your own kind of style of training. So if you're a bodybuilder, you're going to be biased towards bodybuilding. If you're a weightlifter, you're going to be biased towards weightlifting. As a powerlifter, I definitely know I was definitely biased towards powerlifting, and probably still am to be honest, because I'm only human. Doesn't so that you need to you need to understand that what works best for you and the techniques or the programs that work for you aren't necessarily going to work for other people, and it might not necessarily be the best practices. Some of the programs and the things I did in the past to get great results don't work for people at all, and they do injure some people, as I found out. <laughs> As I uh, as I coached for a while, um, but as regards to qualifications, just to get to your answer, so I imagine you probably just want to get into it, into it and get going. Um, the the best strength conditioning qualification to get within the UK, if you don't have a degree, um, or postgraduate degree, or even an HND, it would be the UKSA, United Kingdom Strength and Conditioning Association. They do three levels. Um, level 1, which is just a weightlifting workshop. Do they even have a level 2 now? I don't know. Am I talking shit? But level 3 is the, the, the fully accredited member, which you have to, you have to pass a four-part four competency test, um, a coaching-based test, which um, looks for your speed and agility competencies, design and, and implement a 15-minute session. There's a three-month case study where you have to coach an athlete or a person for three months um, show your monitoring processes, uh, your target setting, your needs analysis, the whole nine for three months, and have the data to back, back it up, show your effects, reflect on that. There is a 50-question exam, and there is a weightlifting exam where you have to demonstrate either snatch and clean and jerk, or sorry, snatch or clean and jerk, and back squat, and be able to, uh, to like... Um, Fend off the the fine teeth tooth comb, which which with with they will go over that exercise with, which to be honest is well, most of it's not what we first do. But anyway, that's a separate that's a separate problem. Um, it's pro is definitely not probably is the definitely the best uh, strength conditioning qualification you're going to get. The NSCA is just a, an exam that any jackass can take and when you or when <laughs> that any jackass can do. And uh, get it. You just need a degree and need to be able to read a book, which anyone can do, really. Um, whereas the UKSA, you actually have to show some kind of competency. You actually have to be able to coach. You have to actually have to be able to coach to some level. Um, but yeah, if you want to take it seriously and actually do a good job, if you don't already work in a gym, you don't already coach people. Start now. Um, and that means that you need to go and do go to technical college and get HND and health and fitness then go and do it and do it that way take the long route I know you're starting at the age of 27 but change career change career and if you want to be good you've got to do what you need to do um, and if you want to get into the strength condition itself you need at the very minimum a postgraduate degree to get uh, to get a job in the UK and good luck with that because it's fucking hard um, I'd say it's probably one of the most competitive fields not any. It's horrific to get a job necessary. Um, but if you want to, don't let me deter you. <laughs> Have a go. So yeah, that that's pretty much it. I mean, you can do other things like you can get um, you can get some Mickey Mouse stuff like the uh, Bala. No, not Bala. I don't call it Bala anymore. Really. Um, British Weightlifting Association. I don't think they call Bala anymore. Fucking whatever. UK Weightlifting or whatever they call themselves these days. They have a level one and level two weightlifting workshop. From what I hear, is pretty shit. Um, but it is um, it is a qualification. Uh, the Great British Powerlifting Federation are coming out with a coaching course, level one, level two. Haven't seen it. I know the IPF are running uh, one out in Spain, so you can go to Spain and get qualified. It's not cheap though; it's like a thousand pounds, which is not too bad, I suppose. Um, but yeah, as far as qualif- qualifications go, if you're not going to get a degree. And you're not going to go to technical college, and you just want an S and C thing. Then the UKSA's accreditation is probably the best you're going to get, as far as like how well it's looked at, and um, how good of a how good of a qualification it is. And to go through and get that qualification, you're going to have to develop it to some capacity. It's not going to make you a good coach, but it will um, it will prove a very good education too. And um, well, that's actually your question. It's probably not the answer you were looking for, but often in life um, we don't get what we want. 
Good luck with your online coaching business if you do start it. Just remember, get yourself a niche. Uh, and do a good job when you finally get co- you finally get clients. But yeah, um, <laughs> good luck. This is Mark of Your Daily Strength Coach Podcast. Signing out. I'll let a uh, chameleonaire lull, lull you to sleep on this fine Thursday afternoon. It's probably going to be fucking raining. Comments, questions, emails, hit me up. Swangin'.